It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. Hello, everybody. It's so good to come to you once again by the way of YouTube, radio, television, however you're getting this message. And I, I do, I just want to thank God for his grace, for his mercy, thank God for keeping us, giving us salvation, most of all, for the, I thank him for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the grace and goodness that God has shown all of us. And I know many of you who, who, who live, uh, everybody who lives in this, this area, the Chattanooga area, Utawa, and uh, other places around the city, uh, you've been through some, some times of turmoil, weather, some people have really taken uh, the, the brunt of it. We, we're praying, and I pray that you all will just be with me in prayer for those that have been severely affected by the tornadoes that came through. You know, all, all that kind of stuff is, that's from the hand of God anyway. God, that's, 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 he's God. He, he's in charge of the elements. So let's pray for them and, and lend and give whatever kind of assistance that we can to help, that we can to assist and to help others who are in need, others who, who are going through times of tragedy. And our hearts really go out to those who, who've lost loved ones and uh, have been physically affected otherwise by, by damage. But praise God, though, for his goodness. We say this all the time, it's so true that even in times of tragedy, we find the grace of God. We find the goodness of God. Uh, people, you say it all the time in, in, in the old churches, where well, God is good, and, and he is. God is, is a good God. And, but we have to understand, too, that there is another side of God. He's always good. He's always good, but God, he's a spirit. God has personality. God is who he is. And if you've been checking your Bible out, we're going we're to get into something here in a minute, minute that I believe is so very important. We might, if God allows it, us to get into the, the end time, what's going to happen when the church is taken out of here? When, once the church leaves, we've been through a, a little bit of it, so we might rehash a little bit and get into uh, certain events that's going to take place during the tribulation period. And if you study your Bible from the Old Testament on up through the New, you find that, that, that God, oh, he's a God of love, he's a lot of pa God of patience, he's a God of long-suffering, God is also a judge. And he told the prophet Samuel to, to go and, and uh, send this, this king, Saul, to the village of the Amalekites to destroy them. God said, I remember what they did. So God is also a God of, of wrath. And he sent this, this king in there with his soldiers, his army. It's, I mean, you wonder what kind of God is that? He's God. Everything belongs to him, all human flesh, everybody, everything. Everything that we say we own, our clothes, our money, our, our, our hair, our, our homes, everything belongs to God because the earth is the Lord's. The seas and everything that's in them, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to God. He's God. He, he does what he, please and what he pleases, and nobody can stay his hand or, or, or restrain him from doing whatever he's going to do. So we, we, we can't question. We ask God for mercy. That's what we do. We ask God for mercy, and we seek his divine will in our lives. We seek the favor of God. There uh, is an event that's coming on, on this world, on, on this world, it's going to be so horrible. For so many people, it's going to be so horrible for not just people who don't believe in God, not just, pe not just people who might even hate God. It's, it's going to be horrible on, on, on people's, morally good people. It's going to be a horrible event that takes place, and it's going to, going to envelop church goers and everybody. I didn't say save people. God's people, before this great tribulation period comes in, God is going to take his church out. Now, we, we read in the book of St. Matthew 24 that, how, how, that God gave certain signs, uh, the, the wars, the pestilence, disease, uh, uh, disturbance in the elements with nature and all that good stuff. And he said that all these are just 
what? The beginning of sorrows. Just the beginning. And then he's, Jesus said that for then, after all that, shall be great tribulation. But before the tribulation comes in, before it actually, it officially sets in, the church is going to be removed. God's people, the bride of Jesus, that body, that group of, of born-again believers around the world, whoever and wherever they are, no matter who they are, no matter wh where they are on, on this globe, they are going to be removed from this planet. That's where the rapture of the church comes in. We're going to be removed, and, and, and there's a reason why. And we'll show you in just a second. So we, we're going to... We're going to sort of recap a little bit and, and, uh, and get into it. So I'm going to move around in, in this uh, pretty rapidly, I, I believe. Now, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, starting with the 13th verse. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not about those who died in Christ, even as others. Don't be sorry about those, even as you saw about others who died without a hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, those who passed on into eternity, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, by God's own word, and I do hope that you believe the word of God. There's so many people that say they believe, but when it comes to certain things that God has spoken in this book, they, they reject it, they won't accept it. That's not a believer. That person, and, and, and maybe I'm talking to some now, that person is not a believer. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that even so, them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. To the, now this coming, now, and, and this is what we, we're going to sort of, sort of deal with a little bit today, just to clarify some things. The, the, the second coming of Christ is literally in two Phases. The first phase of the second coming is the catching away of God's people, God's church. That is not his literal second coming on earth. We'll read about that in a second. So it, it, this, this, we believe that we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. They're going to rise with, with, with new bodies, with, with glorified bodies. They'll be brought back from the grave. Believers who have perished, believers who have died, no matter how they died or, or in, in, in what era they died, they're going to be brought back. People who believe the dead in Christ, when they hear this trump of God, this voice of the archangel, they are going to rise first and then we which are alive, because the world is going to be going on on its normal course of everyday business, just like it is today. You know, people are going to be going to work. People are going to be building, saving money, earning money. Uh, folks are going to be doing right toward their communities, neighborhoods. People are going to be doing dirt in the neighborhoods. You know, just, just the, the, the normal course of, work, of everyday world events. The, the, but then, in the middle of all this, after the dead in Christ are going to be snatched up. They're going to rise first. First, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's a blessing. That's a wonderful blessing. And the reason, and it, it, it says it plainly here, let's, if I can get it, the reason for this, now this is the catching away of the church. Now the Bible says if we read on down to the, uh, in the fifth chapter uh, of First Thessalonians, but of the times and seasons, brothers, you have no need that I write unto you. Because you should know. We, we've already explained the, the, the signs of the end time, the, the seasons of the end time. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. And many people are going to be caught unaware. Many people, as, as Jesus said, in, in, in a day when, when, when you think not your Lord comes, in a day when you're not looking for him, he's going to come. He's going to catch many people unaware. The, the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night, and this is one sign, when they shall say, or when people are talking about, peace and safety, then sudden destruction 
cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brothers are not in darkness. You, 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 your eyes have been opened to see the, the truth of God, the light of God through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you're not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You're all children of light, those, not if all, everybody, but all people who have been born into the family of God. I think we did the message on being born again week before last, on that, that, that real process of being born again. So you're children of the light and, and children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, believers, therefore, brothers and sisters in Christ, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day do this, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath. Praise God Almighty. And I, I am so grateful. The church believers have not been appointed to the, the, the wrath of God that's coming on, on this planet in the face, in, 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 in the great tribulation period. We have not been appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. That's, that's the purpose. So, this rapture of the church is going to take place so fast. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Let me get this. I didn't have that, that listed here, but I, I'm going to get to it. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then immediately, immediately following, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Jesus is not coming on, on this planet at that time, putting his feet on, on planet Earth and, and choosing the people who, who, who are going with him. That's already been done. The, the choosing has already been done. The choosing took place before the foundation of the world. And he's coming to redeem, to save, to save those people. That, that, that's, that's what he's done. To save those people he's already ordained to salvation. To save those people he's already saved. To save them from this wrath to come. And it's going to take place so fast that if you have not if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, you won't have time to say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me. I, I, want, I, want, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and say, there'll be no time for, for plea, for anything, not even for plea bargain. It's like we do in some of our courts, the court system. So the book says this in uh, 1 Corinthians, the, the 15th chapter. Let's see if I can, I can find this here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, the 15th chapter and the 51st, yeah, 51st verse. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, meaning we're, we're not all going to die be, before, before Jesus comes for his church. The world's going to be going on its everyday course of business. So we shall not all sleep, but we shall all, the dead in Christ and the living in Christ, we shall all be changed. How fast? The next verse tells us, 52nd verse, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, before you can even bat your eye, you know, in a moment, this is a, a second, this is like millisecond kind of time, you know, so fast you won't even see it taking place, you won't even see it happening. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, listen, with the trump of God, we just read it, Jesus is going to come with the trump of God and with the voice of the archangel. Okay, at the last trump, <clears throat> for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Listen, and we shall be changed. Okay, this is going to take place. This is the, the next event on, on God's calendar of prophecy. This is what the believers all over the world are waiting on, the catching away of the church. We're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in there. That's what's going to happen. So, and, and this event is going to take place. This one right here in Zechariah, the 14th chapter, starting with the first verse, and I hope you're turning pages in your Bible, and the book says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Now, this is talking about God's day of wrath. God's day of vengeance. The day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil, talking about to Jerusalem, shall be divided 
in the midst of thee. Now, this is why the tribulation is called actually the time of Jacob's troubles, because it, God is going he's gonna, to he's gonna bring conversion. There are a lot of Messianic Jews now. Don't, don't think that, that no Jews believe in, that Jesus is the Messiah. They do. Yes, they do. Many of them do. A lot of, a lot of people that Jesus taught, who, 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 who followed him? Jews did. You know, Hebrews, Jews, it tickles me out. Some people sit in churches and call themselves so-called Christians and, and believers and hate other people and hate Jews. Jesus was a Jew, okay? He, he was a Jew. But anyway, his day's coming. He, he said he's going to gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken and the house is rifled, and this is going to take place during the tribulation period. The house is rifled and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth. This is the literal second coming of Christ. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet Listen, his feet, this is when he's coming to planet Earth. Remember, he's going to catch the church away. The, the church is going to be what we call raptured away. We're going to be caught up. We're looking for that. Caught up in the rapture. We're going to meet the Lord in, in, the, in the air, to be with the Lord, meet Jesus and the rest of the saints in the clouds and in the air. He's not coming back for his church. Not, not, no, not, not in the rapture. He's going to catch his church away. He's going to get us out of here because we have not been appointed to wrath. Okay, we, we, we're pointing for God's grace and God's salvation. God's people have been. But right here where it says, his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. The, the mountains are going to, they're going to, Part of something. It's going to, there's going to be so much stuff going on in, in the time of the tribulation period. It's, it's, it's going to be frightening. Nobody, and we're going to read a little bit of it, but nobody, I don't believe, can make a movie. I wish somebody would. Could make a movie that would, would halfway depict some of the events that's going to take place during the time of Jacob's troubles. During the, the whole world's got to go through it during the time of the great tribulation period, but the church is already gone, remember? Caught away, caught up to meet the Lord in, in, in the air. And right here, his feet, Jesus is going to stand on the Mount of Olives and the, is, the earth is going to be moving and, and shaking. This right here is the second coming of Christ. And when he comes back, according to my Bible, he's coming, as, as the Bible says in Revelation, he, he's, he's coming to judge and to make war. You don't want to be here. You, and I hope to God, if you have not received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, I didn't say if you joined the church. I'm not talking about joining churches and, and that kind of stuff. I hope that you will re believe the gospel, man. Believe the gospel. Believe and receive Jesus for yourself. That, why do you think the gospel is being, being preached right now? Why do, why do you think? Jesus talked about it in St. Matthew. He talked about that in St. Matthew 24 also. He talked about how this, the, the gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached around the world as a witness against people. Not, to, not so people, everybody gets saved because everybody's not going to be saved. That's, part, that's one of the, the hard truths of the Bible. That's, that's, just, that's just it. And we are definitely going to get into some of that. That's one of the hard truths of God. He, he's not going to save everybody. He, he's not going to do it. But the gospel is preached so that nobody is, is going to have an excuse. And during the tri time of the great tribulation period, God is going to send forth two of his emissaries. Boy, it's, it's going it's to be awesome. Well, we, we'll talk about it here in, here in just a minute. But this part, between the catching away of the church, where the church is caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and this time right here where the feet of Jesus is going to stand on the Mount of Olives, there's a whole lot going on in between. The seven years between the rapture of the church and the, the second, the literal second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, that time period is, is going to be a time that this world has never has never seen it with all the calamity, with all the tragedy combined that's ever taken place. This is going to be a time that people have never witnessed before. Shortages, food shortages. The, for, for, for a minute, 
the wealthy might be able to get back a little so forth as food, but all that's going to be taken away. Everything. God's going to kill off. Man, it's, and it's right in this book. And people have people have not read it. People, preachers have not preached it. They're not going to. There, there's reason for that. Because everybody wants to believe that God is just, he, he's like an old great uncle so-and-so. You know, he's just sitting on his throne, just loving his little children and, 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 and pity-patting everybody while they do what they want. God, God's not like that, folks. God loves his people. God, for God so loved the world, he gave Jesus so that we could receive salvation. He, he gave his son for us. But people, are re they have rejected him, and people are still rejecting the truth. They're still rejecting the everlasting gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, book of Romans 13, and let's go to about the 11th verse. And it says, and that knowing the time, brothers and sisters in Christ, so warn others. I tell you, that, I, what, what we're here to do is, is to speak of God's goodness, to declare his, his righteousness, to, to glorify God, and, and to be witnesses for the grace of God, and, and, and ministers and to, to, to teach the grace of God, people to preach the grace of God, to testify. Of, of the grace of God, to, to talk about the gospel, to give the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we're living in, in this time, this is, is during the time, it's now high time to awake out of sleep. For now, now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. It's nearer than when we first got saved. We're living right on the very cusp. Of the, the end of, of this this Gentile world domination, this the the, the time of the Gentiles, man, it's, it's not over. It, th this world is coming to its end. So our salvation is now nearer than when we when we believed. The night is far spent, man. And and when you talk about night in certain aspects of, of biblical terms, you're talking about darkness. When when sin has 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 reached a peak, it's at its height. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Jesus is coming, folks. So let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting, no believer should anyway, not in rioting and drunkenness and, and in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put men, praise God, trust God. Let God's spirit rule and reign in your life. Put ye, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no, make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now, another warning. We, we got to wake up. People have to wake up. People, have, people in churches got to wake up. There's no way you, now you can, you can be a church member anywhere. You know, we got church members, world church living God. There are church members everywhere. But the, you, being a church member will not make you a believer. A ch being a church member will not secure salvation for you. You must be born again. You must truly receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must truly receive him as your Lord. That means your, he's your, your Lord, your owner, your governor, the master of your life, Lord and Savior. He does not come in just to save you and not be Lord over your life. He doesn't come in just to be Lord over your life and not save you. He is Lord and Savior. So it's time to wake up, to stop playing religious games, to stop playing, that, that, that's the grown folks game I call it, like little, little children. When we were kids, we played house. People played house. Grown-ups play church. Time to get away from that. If, if you, there's no way a believer is going to, be, you can be a church member and hate folks all day long and, and be envious all day long, never will bother you, never have conscience about anything and feel rightly justified about hating other folks. That person is hell bound. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about that. You know, it's impossible for a believer to hate. Now, we, we have to move on since we're dealing with time, and I, I want to make sure that, that, you, that you get this, if you will. Now, the book of, of Peter, third chapter of 2 Peter, now, he says, now this second epistle, the second letter, beloved, I now write to you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you'll be mindful, that you, these, these the, the words, the teaching of Jesus, his prophecies, his truths will be, will be at, at the forefront of your minds, that you'll be mindful of the words which were spoken before of the holy prophets and of the commandment of us 
the apostles of the Lord and Savior, Jesus. That's who he was. Knowing this first, and he still is Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. They don't want to believe that, that the rapture is going to take place. They don't want to believe that the tribulation period is coming. People don't want to believe that God is going to cast people into hell. It's coming. All that is coming. Now, that's going to happen. Well, hell is coming later. Uh, after seven-year tribulation, then there's going to be a thousand-year rule and reign of Christ, uh, Jesus on this earth. The kingdom of God is going to literally rule over this earth for a thousand years, and then the, the very end shall come where people are going to, church folks and everybody are going to be sent to hell. Man, it's crazy. It, uh, everybody except believers. Now, we have to read, so don't be a scoffer. Where people are going to say, where's the promise of his coming? Just read the fourth verse. Where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of, of the creation. And it talks about how people were willingly ignorant of, of how God dealt with the old world, destroyed the whole people sing about it like this little, little cute Bible story where, where God destroyed the world in the days of Noah. With, with water, that happened. God destroyed, did away with a whole world full of people. He, he, and and who, who could stop it? Nobody could. God did it. That is a biblical truth. So in these days, he's, it's, it's, going, it's set up to happen again. God is going to redo again. He's going to usher in a new kingdom. And, and with Noah here, about Noah and his family, eight people out of the whole world were saved. And, and then God ushered in a, a, a new world. God is going to, he's, he's ready. He's ready to redo it. He's going to redo the whole world. And, I, and, that's, and, and the people who've been born into the family, he's saving people. And those he's saving now are, are people going to be ushered into the new world that's coming. It's, we'll get to it. It's all in the book. Might not get to it today, but, but we'll get to it. So, but first, this period, the great tribulation period is, is going to take place. The church has been caught away. And after seven years, then Jesus, his feet shall stand on, on that, in that day on the Mount of Olives. But seven years between all that, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. The first part of the great tribulation period, as we, we, we read the other week, I believe, was about uh, how the Antichrist, right now, he, he's alive. He, he's alive somewhere. Evil man born of a wicked woman somewhere or another who's going to present himself as being God. He hates everything concerning God, uh, uh, people who live for God. He, he hates everything. But there's only one person, one, one thing that's keeping this evil, demonic man from showing his face now, and that is the church. That's why Thessalonians say, says, only he who lets now let until he be taken out of the way. This is talking about the church. The, the church is actually keeping this man hid. So when the church is ratcheted away, then the, the, rule, the, the tribulation period starts off, and the first part of that is the rule and reign of, of one world's government. And it's all biblically recorded. It's all shaped up. It's ready right now. But it's, it's already, already stated and talked about in the book. So let's go, if we will, very quickly. Pastor, I used to teach about this all the time. I think he did. A, I don't know. I know a lot of you young people don't know too much about vinyl records, those, those uh, uh, big 33s, yeah, but he, he did, a, he did a, a record on one of those, put it about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And here in Revelation, we'll, we'll just read some of it. This right here, now the church is gone. The church has been moved out of the way. The church is, 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 has been caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in there. During this period of time, and yes, we will, the, the the church, the Bible teaches us, see, we won't, be, we won't stand in the, at the great white throne judgment to get judged for our sins and God has to determine whether or not we're going with, with Jesus or going to hell. No, that's already been determined. <clears throat> but while the world is going through tribulation, we're going to receive rewards for things that we've done in this body. While we're on planet Earth, it's being saved individuals, whether they're good or bad, we're going to get paid for it. We're going to get rewarded for it. You know, Plus, we're, we're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. That's for believers after being raptured out of here, okay? That's for believers. Now, 
<coughs> we're going to do that, also get taught more about this world, and we're going to be given assignments. A lot of things are going to be taking place, according, according, and that's all right in this book, the, how we're going to rule and reign with Christ on the earth. So here in Revelation, this is one of the things that's going to happen. And, and you see these horses riding right now. The four, four horses of the apocalypse, the, the end time. The, the, the four horses are going to ride just all out at, at gallop speed during the time of Jacob's troubles. And this book here, this, this word of God, talks about some things that are sealed up and nobody can reveal it or open it up but God himself. It's the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Revelation 6, it, it says, and I, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it, as it were the noise of thunder one of the four beasts saying, these are living creatures in, in, in glory somewhere, saying, come and see. Come and look at this and see what's really going on. Because these horses are going to ride all out during the time of Jacob's troubles. And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. A bow me meaning warfare, in, in, in a sense, and the crown of, of authority, kingship, leadership, all this, all this going to be covered. Okay, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That horse is riding right now. Now, when people think about warfare, when people think about authority and king, kingship, influencing people's lives and all that good stuff, conquering other people, they generally think about it with, with, uh, with, about force. Just doing it by brute force and warfare. Well, it's done through religion too. It's all, the the cap to captive to hold other people captive is also done in religion. And this horse is going to be going wide open in the in the coming days. It's riding now. This horse is going to and fro on the earth right now. But in the days of the tribulation period, it's going to be wide open. And and he said he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he opened the second seal. I heard the second beast say, come and see. And then went another horse that was red. And power was given unto him to set thereon to take peace from the earth. Man, we're about living in that time right now. Look, everywhere you look around the world, the, the world is in, in a total state of unrest. Communities, states, nations, countries, revolutions everywhere. As Jesus talked about it, wars and rumors of wars, kingdoms, rising against kingdoms, just violence everywhere, neighborhood violence, people killing each other. You know, no, no peace. Not peace, peace. People don't have peace in their homes. So this, this horse is going is to ride wide open. In the days of the, you're talking about lawlessness, violence, vandalism, man, hatred, just, just everything. It, it's going to be full-blown in, in the coming dates of the tribulation period. People won't be able to walk the streets at all. Like it's it's going to be dangerous. It's going to be horrible. Listen, and he, this also sent forth, this rider will sent forth, take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. Does this sound familiar? Kill one another. Hallelujah. It, it, it's funny how people say we, we love each other, we love our people, and the folk go around just, just, just needlessly slaughtering and, and, and killing their own. This, this is horrible. This is, it's, I mean, it's bad enough to kill anybody. To murder, that's, that's horrible. But peace is going to be taken so far from this earth that the whole world is going to be in violence. Just in violence. Kingdoms war, war against kingdoms, nations against na communities, neighborhoods. This, man, it's crazy. It's going, to, it's going to be wild. And that they should kill one another, and there was given him unto, unto him a great sword. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. You know, it's a pair of scales, the, the old-time scales that people use for uh, just weights and measures. You, you want to buy a pound of rice? Well, you had to... You know, you, you had to sort of balance that out with, with so much silver, gold, or coins, whatever it was, and, and it would be fair. And, and man, you think it's bad now. You think it's horrible now. There was given unto him a pair of balances in his hand, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat 
for a penny, and I forget, it's not quite a bushel, I don't think, a, 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 a measure of, of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a, a penny. Let's talk about bread. Let's talk about the, the, the staple of life. People need stuff like that to live. Wheat, bread, uh, food items, groceries, a measure of wheat, uh, say for a, a few loaves of bread, will cost a full day's wage. So where do you get that? I, I think the overseer brought that up in, in St. Matthew, the, the 20th, chapter, and, you, and you, you take the word of God, and, and you let, by revelation, you compare it, and, and you look at it. And in and, and, and St. Matthew 20, it talks about how th this man went out to have laborers into his vineyard, and, and he promised each and every one of them a penny a day. The, a penny represents a day's labor, a day's wage, and, and this is going to be horrible. A measure of wheat for a penny, people aren't, aren't going to be able to afford to live, and not only on top of that, people aren't going to be able to buy or sell, according to this book, this Bible that people say they, they say they believe in, unless they have already received the name or the mark of the beast or the number of his name, the Antichrist. So you don't want to be here. You to, to, to sign up, to say, I'm a part of this ungodly, demonic government. This man who's shown himself to be God, this man is my God. Uh, that's, that's what people are basically going to have to do. So during this time, this is just the outset, the beginning of the great tribulation period. Right, right, after, right after the church is, is raptured away, the Antichrist is going to make his stand. Look, I've got the answer for the world's problems. The, the power of the Commonwealth of Europe and uh, other nations of the world, they're going to back this man and receive his leadership. There's going to be a one world's government, and it's going to be ruled. If just read your, check the Bible out. You 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 read it and how how when Daniel was waiting on his blessing from the Lord, that it was delayed about three weeks because the angel that was bringing it, he, he had to stop and and, and uh, he got delayed in Persia. But by the king of Persia, it wasn't just the the, the king. A natural man couldn't have, have uh, hindered that angel. But it was what authority this. The, the kingdom of Persia was, was, was ruled by, by satanic power. And that's, that's, that's what's going to happen. Well, the Bible speaks of it in Ephesians 2, about how there are wickedness in high places, principalities and powers, all, all that good stuff. So everything has something spiritual uh, behind it. Just, just remember that. <clears throat> so in this case, uh, it'll take a day's wage to buy a few loaves of bread, and you can't even buy that. You can't sustain uh, yourself with utilities or anything unless you have the name of the beast, the number of his name, or the, the mark of his name. This, then it's going to be horrible. And then the Bible says right here, and see that thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Listen, it's rich, the rich, They'll be able for a for a minute, for a minute, it's not going to mean anything after, after a while. After this, you get farther into the great tribulation period. But for a minute, they'll be able to sustain. They can, they can pay the going day's wage for a few loaves of bread. They'll be able to afford that. Uh, doctors can. They, they'll, be, they'll be able to afford that. But the common everyday man, middle class, poor, you might as well forget it. Upper middle, you might as well forget it. Jesus is the world's only hope. Believe that, folks. Please believe that and receive him as your Lord and Savior because this time is coming. These horses are riding right now. See thou hurt us. That's what oil and wine in, 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 the, in the Bible, biblical terms, is representing riches. You know, sometimes oil represents like the joy of the Lord or the anointing of God, the spirit of God. It also represents wealth, wealth. And that's why this says, see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. The, the things that's going on with everybody else won't affect them. Man, just, it's really amazing to see how people are, are, are preparing themselves. I hate to say it. They are preparing themselves to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. If you go through it, you're damned. I'm serious. You are damned. This is the, the way I said it because the Bible said it. Uh, that's what the Bible says in Thessalonians. You, you gotta, you, you're in trouble to have heard the truth of God's word, to have heard the, the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and to reject it, whether you're a church person or not, to really reject the truth of God, to have put that aside for yourself, for, for, from yourself, your family, whatever, you're going to see this. You'll go through this. See, thou hurt not the oil and the wine, and it'll be okay with them for a minute. 
This is the, the third horse that, that's, that's riding through. It's been riding through. All these horses are moving right now. I heard something recently uh, concerning this said, and everybody should please take precautions concerning this, this coronavirus outbreak. Do what you need to do. Take care of yourself. Take care of, your, take care of your family. Take care of others. Protect yourself. Protect your family. Protect others others. Do what's good and right. It's the right thing to do. Okay, do that. But I, I heard uh, somebody was questioning about, man, why is it that certain celebrities and certain others can, can uh, they can get tested rapidly and all this. Say, so is it just for the rich? And this, this person said, well, that's really the way it works in the country, in so many words, you know. That, that's, that's just the history of the country. You know, it, but people are going to see, not see that thou heard not the oil and the wine. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be awful. So let's get this last horse out of the way. Let's, let's read this, the seventh verse. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. Take a look at this. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And hell, the grave, followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, over seven billion people, and a quarter of of seven billion people being killed off by disease and famine and hunger. This this horse and de- I mean it's right today. Look at how rapidly people are dying these days through famine, pestilence, uh, disease, people killing each other, war, murder, just all kinds of stuff. It's, everything's going on. It, we think it's bad now. During this time, this is the, the first, during the first half of the Great Tribulation period, these, hor- these horses are going to be just totally turned loose to ride. Listen, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger. Listen, with hunger, people are going to starve to death. And with the beast of the earth, they're going to turn on, on people. The, the, man, look at it. Just look at it. The beast of the earth, the, the animals, the the dogs, the cats, these exotic animals, tigers, all this kind of stuff. It's, they're going to lose their fear of mankind and turn on mankind. It's, it's going to be a mess. You definitely do not want to be here. It's going to be a mess. And this is going to go on, the, but this, this man is making his promise. I've got the answer. I've got the answer. And, and during this whole time, God's going to, see, God is never without representation. Now, I, I have to read this. Quickly, in, in uh, the 11th chapter of Revelation. Okay, let's see. 11th chapter, starting with the, about the third verse. Okay, are you with me? Good, good, good. Let's read. The, all this is going to take place. We'll, perilous times. During this time, d- demons, <laughs> demonic creatures, that uh, the book calls them locusts because they're going to be like they're going to devour everything in their path and bring torment to, 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 to humans. Been caged up for years and years and years and years and years. Caged up, they're going to be let out of the bottomless pit to, to, to torment people. And it's, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be crazy. You, you believe the Bible? Do you really believe the Bible? You, you, see, if you believe the Word of God, you, you believe where it says that God loves me, well, you have to believe all of it. Just every last minute, because God does love us. He loves people. He loves the world. He, that's why he gave Jesus for our salvation. But if you reject him, sorry for you. Now, Revelation, very quickly, uh, 11th chapter, 3rd verse. This is, this is what God is going to do. He said that I, I'm going to give power unto my, and, and by the way, all of this is, the, Revel, the book of Revelation is not written exactly all the way through like in chronological order. Okay, but these are these are some of the events that's going to take ministers of God, men of God, to put these things in perspective. This is going to happen, and and uh, then a hundred in, in the book talks about one hundred forty-four thousand Jews, then twelve thousand out of each tribe that's designated in, in the Bible, and and these men they they're going to they're they're preach the the everlasting gospel. 
even in times of Jacob's troubles. Isn't it? Man, it's, it's going to be something else. God has got people reserved and set up for them. So these men, I believe, now I'm just saying I believe this, that these men right here, these two witnesses, are going to be preaching. They are going to preach in troublesome times. And 144,000 Jews are going to, going to get saved. Now, they're already Messianic Jews, so please don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. God has never, never will forsake Israel. Never, no matter what. So don't, don't think that for a minute. So the book says, I'll give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Going to look like the old prophets, the old desert prophets and all. It come back. And, and these two men, that's, all, that's about three and a half years. Three and a half years, they're going to preach the word, preach the gospel, along with miracles. These are the, uh, men that, that, that have, have been here before, been here before God's men. And we're going to see who they are. Take a look and see who they are right quick in, in the book. And they're going to preach, clothe the sackcloth, sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. These are God's messengers. And if any man will hurt them, fire, let's, look, look at this, Fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, then the book says, Touch not mine anointing, do my prophets no harm. And if any man will, will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. God's, God is with them. He was with them when they were walking the earth, on the earth. God is, 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 is going to be with them through this. These have the power to shut the heaven. Now, th this should give you a clue. They have the power to shut the heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy while God is using them. In, in the days of their ministry, they have the power to shut the heaven and they have the power over waters to turn them to blood. Now, can you think of any two men that God has used in this manner? I know you can. Right off the bat, Moses and Elijah. Man, Elijah was, he called fire down from heaven. He was a foul ball. And, and, and he, was, he was caught up in a whirlwind, taken out of here. D don't know where God took him, but God took him somewhere and preserved him. Took him away, living. And, and by the way, all that represents something. We'll, we'll get more into that. They, 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 were, they were on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. Moses called the man, uh, he, was, he was like the, he brought plagues on Egypt, spoke plagues. God used him to do all these great and wonderful miracles and back with the power of God, signs and wonders. They have power to shut the heaven, and the Bible says they have power to call fire down in heaven, and they have power over waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, after about three and a half years, and during this time, some pe people who have never, see, in places like this, around here, this country or whatever, that, that they hear the truth every day, they hear about the gospel, and they reject it, this is not for them. But people who have not heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I hate to say it, but I believe there are some churches who've never preached it who've never preached the gospel of Jesus. And, and, and that's, the, that's their foundation, man. That's, that's, what, they, you know, that's, that's what that church is, the, the, the believers, the gospel of the Lord Jesus. But once these men's work is, is done, once their work is done, the, the, the Bible says this in, in the seventh verse, when they shall finish their testimony, the beast, this Antichrist, that ascends out of the bottomless pit, shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them, but not until their work is done. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So right over there in Israel, they're going to kill them, and their bodies are going to lay out in the street. And, and they of the people, they, and, but they're going to they're be a terror, even though they're bringing the truth. And people said all these miracles, and they of the people and kindred, kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and they shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put into graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, because they're going to be glad that these men are dead, that they've been taken out of the way. They're going to have a big party, make merits and gifts each other, big celebration. But in the 11th verse it says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon 
all them that saw them. This is something. And God's going to beckon them. Come up. They heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up, up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. God's going to catch them up to, to be with him after the three and a half years of their ministry. And, and now just, just take a look at it. Back in St. Matthew, think about the, the 17th chapter, when, when Jesus when, was, was, was in the mountain praying, and he, I think he took Peter and James and John with him, and, and uh, he was transfigured be, before them, and there appeared with him Moses. Listen, Moses and Elijah. So, sure, see, those, Moses, he, he died, but God buried him. God did. So, e Elijah sort of represents the church. The church, people who are caught up together, what, a, 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 alive, alive. The church, the, the born-again believers, those who are caught up together in the clouds while they're alive. Moses passed through death's door. He's, he's, he's going to be brought back. So this is, they represent each, each group of people, showing that the, the grace of God is so powerful, the salvation of God is, is, is so powerful strong. You can't withstand it. God is with his people. He's got us, folks. God has his people covered. So these men, they were they talked about on the Mount of Transfiguration with, with Jesus. They talked about the, the, the upcoming crucifixion of the Lord. But I believe in my heart of hearts that Jesus also was giving them their assignments for the upcoming time of Jacob's troubles, for the time of great tribulation. I believe that with all my heart. Why? Well, so will God show you? Yeah, we'll get, that's what the book is about. It's about the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have to have the, re the Spirit of God, the anointing of God in you to get the revelation. Some people just can't see it. No matter, you can tell it to them all day long. They just, you ever talk to people like that? You try to tell them uh, certain truths, try to help them with anything, uh, try to help them solve problems, whatever, whatever the, the, the matter is, and they just don't seem to get it. Some people are like that. They, no matter what, they just don't seem to get it. So these men are going to preach, and, and out of out, out of that, I think, let's see, let's go to, very quick, we're about to run out of time. I'm not going to be able to get into everything that I thought. And in the seventh chapter of Revelation, the, the Bible says, uh, seventh chapter, hmm, second verse. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, he, they were given a charge, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed in 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Judah, listen, Judah, Reuben, Gad, uh, Asa, Naphtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Eshachar, Zebulun, Joseph, Benjamin, uh, 12,000 out of each tribe. Uh, out of all the tribes of the children of Israel, comes 144,000, they're going to be saved. 12,000 out of each tribe. Out of all the tribes of the children of Israel, that's the 144,000, not these other folks. They're saying they're part of it. No, they're not. It's talking about of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And these men, are going to preach the everlasting gospel, man. It's, it's, it's going to be something else. It's going to be something else. And, and troublesome times, because the Antichrist is going to be getting rid of this in the book. We'll, maybe next week, God willing, I'll say that, we'll get to it. Where the, the, the Antichrist is going to church, because people are still going to be going to church. He's going to turn on the church world. He's going to burn the church world, burn churches down with fires. It's going to be, it's going to be rough around here. You do not want to be here. You want don't be a church goer. Be a, be a born again believer. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So these two men, Moses and Elijah, man, they're going to be preaching through troublesome times, horrible times, and and these hundred forty four thousand, they're going to be preaching the everlasting gospel. They're, they're going to be the servants of God, sealed, sealed to preach the gospel. And people who have never heard the gospel, they are going to be given a chance for salvation. They're going to be saved during the time of Jacob's troubles, and they're going to pay a price. They're going to, a, a lot of them are going to be killed. They're going to be martyred. They're going to be killed. They're going to be beheaded for the witness of Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it's in the book. We'll get to it. Praise the Lord. But we're living. And, and what's the reason for the message? Well, God sort of urged me, he did urge me to, to preach it, to do it. To, to do it for, for one thing, it's God's word. 
That's why we're doing it. This is God's message, and we are living in the last days. We're living in, in, in the days that precede the coming of this event right here. Between the, the, the time, the rapture of the church, and the, the, the literal second coming of Jesus, all this stuff is going to, be, is going to take place. So they're going to preach, and man, it's, 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 going to be a, it's going to be a mess. So let's, let's just take a look and see at some of the things that's going to happen. In Revelation, let's see, let's see, about the, about the 16th chapter, very quickly. Revelation 16, okay? Let's see, go with me there, if you, if you will. It's going to be a mess. You do not want to be here. All right, we're about out, but we'll, we'll, we'll get it. All right, Revelation 16 chapter, just, just to give you an overview uh, of some, some, some of the plagues that are going to be taking place. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials, the vessels, the vases, whatever you want to call it, the vials of God's wrath upon the earth. So I thought God is a God of love. See, people are just crazy something. Well, why would God do that? God's a God of love. Don't, don't be, please, I, I, don't be stupid, okay? God does what he wants to. He does what he wants to. It, he, and he's going to tell to go out and you pour the vials of God's wrath upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon, upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshiped his image. And if you're left here, you will receive the mark of the beast. If, you, if you've heard the gospel, you've heard the word of God, you will receive his mark. You, gonna, you will, as, as Thessalonians has taught us, you, you're going to be sent a strong delusion. So you will believe a lie. You, we had that the other week. If you've been following the, the messages, you, you, you know that already. You, you, you've got it. I hope you got it. They're going to believe that this man is God, and people are going to accept this man as being God, when in fact he's the Antichrist, the, the child of hell, son of the devil. They're going to accept him as their leader, as their God. And this noisome and grievous sword, that's in Zechariah 2. Hold your finger right here in, in Revelation 16. We're coming right back, because I have to read this. This noisome and grievous sword. And let's see, Re uh, Zechariah 14. Now just read that one scripture. In 12th verse, and it says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. The whole world, the Antichrist, is going to point the whole world against Israel. And this is the plague that's going to come. Their flesh shall consume away. This is the noisome and grievous sword that's going to fall on mankind. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Can you imagine that? And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth while they stand on their feet. While people are alive, their flesh is going to begin to rot. The eyes are going to, be, to begin to rot out of their sockets. It's, it's just going to, it's going to be horrible. You don't want to be here, friend. And, and Jesus is the key. He, he is, he's, the, he's the world's only hope. He's it. Let's see. I, I, I got to get this. Back to Revelation uh, 16 right quick. Third, third verse now. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. The, and and th this is not like uh, some kind of parable or anything. This is little, little, stu little stuff right here. This is going to happen. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. God's going to do away with all fresh water, all water. Listen, and, and I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. Because thou, they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you've given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another voice out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. God, what you're doing is right. What you're, do, what you're doing is good. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given, given to the sun to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched, and, and, and it's going to happen. The sun's, man, it's going to be so hot that people's skin's going to begin to blister. 
from, from the rays of, of the heat of the sun. They were scorched, listen, with great with, with fire. They were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. People are already that stubborn. Right now, today, I know some folks like that. That stubborn. They will not repent no matter what. They will not repent to give God glory. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. Say that so. That people will not repent. And in, in, in the great tribulation period, folks are going to cuss. Instead of lifting the, the eyes and the arms of heaven, and ask God, please have mercy on me. Forgive me. You know, to, to humble themselves unto God, they're going to curse God out. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, sin and violence and pain. And, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and, and they blasphemed the God of heaven because of the pains, their pains and their sores, and they repented not of their deeds. This, this gonna, it's going to be rough, folks. You don't want to believe. That. You don't, don't want to be here. You do not want to be here. Let's move down here quickly to the 15th verse, uh, 17th verse. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there were voices. Listen, your, your, your voice, it, it's all voices from everywhere. Noise of, of, of wars formerly fought in olden times. The voices of people who were drowning in the flood, screaming for help, they're going to be voices. Your voice is captured in, in the universe. It, it's out there. Sounds are captured in, in the atmosphere, in, in the universe. And they're going to be voices and thunders and lightnings. That's enough to drive somebody crazy. Lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations failed. God is, and God is warring. He, he, he is El Gabor. And God is going to remember how he did away with, with Babylon. And, and it's sad that when God turns this, the, 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 the hell, the plague of hell loose, where every stone, every nugget of hell is going to weigh from 85 to 100 pounds, the Bible says in the 21st verse, there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men, praise God. No, they didn't. They blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Friends, you don't want to be here. This time is coming up. This is, is the time during the seven year part of it. Just, just a little bit of it right here. Between the, time, between the rapture of the church and the literal second coming of Christ to, at the end of this seven year period of tribulation period. I thank God for his, for his goodness, for his mercy. And I know that many of you do too. I know, I know that, that you believe out there, you're praising God that if Jesus should come today, that, that you're ready, that you're ready. And you, I'm sure you have concerns for, for your family, for friends and, and other people that you know and love and care about. All we can do is give people the witness and test the, the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and give them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everything else is in the hands of God. I hope the message has been a blessing to you. I'm going to say goodbye until the next time, and may God bless you until then. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.